Okay, it's Mother's Day 2018, and it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I write more than I do videos, but today I felt like I needed to um, express myself, not just in written words, but in spoken word. So I'm just gonna bear it all right now. I am in Connecticut, my first time here, so I get to put another pin in my US map at home. Anyway, it's Mother's Day, and I am away from home, away from my mother, away from my grandmother. Um, as a flight attendant, you make your own holiday, so we celebrated Mother's Day yesterday. And um, anyway, so I'm here, and I'm just thinking, that um, Mother's Day is kind of bittersweet for me because I'm not a mother. And at this point, I, I'm pretty sure that I will never be a mother, at least not by uh, natural childbirth as I'm coming up on uh, having an ophorectomy, which means my ovaries removed because I am at very high risk for ovarian cancer because I'm BRCA1 positive, um, which basically for people who don't know what that means, BRCA1 positive uh, means that um, cancer is, I'm, pre, I'm predisposed genetically uh, to cancer. Um, and so having had breast cancer, I'm at high risk for ovarian cancer. So my ovaries have to go. And at 43, um, you know, that's kind of a hard pill to swallow because I'm, I'm kind of, I guess you would call like a late bloomer. Like I waited, um, waited to do everything in my life. I, I waited to get married, was waiting to have kids, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And so uh, the right time never came in terms of the right time to have kids, you know? Um, and so now I'm 43 and I know people have babies at like 60 and 70 and all that. I don't think I want to be having babies at, you know, 60, even though it's not even an option for me. But anyway, um, the point that I'm making is I try to live life without regrets. And I think at this point, I do have regret of not having children and um, to not have the option to have children naturally. You know, that's a, a tough pill to swallow. So with this pending ophorectomy coming up, it'll probably be at the end of the year. This Mother's Day is kind of hard for me because I'm coming to the realization that, you know, I'm probably not gonna be a mom. Of course I can adopt. Of course I have nieces, nephews, I have friends with kids, and of course, you know, I can kind of be a mom to them, but y'all know it's not the same. When you, when you have your own children, you know, it's, it's different. And that's something that I won't, you know, get to experience. And that's kind of, that's kind of hard for me. Um, I'm not happy about having to have my ovaries removed. I'm not happy about not having kids. I'm not happy about not experiencing being a mom. Now, some days, you know, when I see kids crying and bad kids, you know, I'm like, oh God, I'm glad I don't have any. But the truth of the matter is I, I do, that is a regret for me. So I have to live with that, that I don't have children. And it was pretty much, you know, my decision because I chose to wait. And the point of all this is I can't stress enough how important it is for you not to wait. If there are things that you want to do in life and you know you want to do them and you're just waiting for the right time, waiting, waiting for the right moment, I don't know that there's ever such a thing as a right time or a right moment. Life is right now. You need to live right now. You need to live for you. You need to live life to the fullest because you sit around and wait, 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 and it's too late. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's too late. So don't wait. Don't wait to live your life. Don't wait to do the things that you really wanna do. Go do them. There's never a right moment. Go do whatever it is that you wanna do. Um, if that means that you wanna have kids, don't wait, have kids. You know what I'm saying? Have them. 
why not? I wish that I had, I wish I had done it. But everything happens the way that it's supposed to happen. And um, I believe that. So um, accepting that and being okay with that, sometimes it's easier said than done. Some days I'm good, other days not so much. Like today, Mother's Day, I'm here by myself. All of my friends, with the exception, there's, I have a handful of friends who are like me who don't have children. Um, but most of my friends, for the most part, are with their children today. Some of them are even with their grandchildren. And I am here by myself doing yoga by a pool in Connecticut. It is what it is. So I just wanted to share that straight from the heart and um, just let you know what it's like um, from my perspective. Uh, as a breast cancer survivor, as one who uh, is BRCA1 positive, as one who has to have their ovaries removed, as one who does not have children um, and would have liked to have had them. Um, yeah, I could have had them over the last couple of years, but I mean, one of the things that people don't talk about with regards to cancer, and I certainly haven't really talked about it, I'm as transparent as I can possibly be, but there are some things that I just am not... Um, able to talk about and I'll just say that you know cancer changes things it changes relationships it changes a whole lot of stuff and there's so much healing that has to happen um, aside from the physical healing there's emotional healing there's so much stuff that has to happen which I'm still going through those processes of healing and to bring to even try to bring a child into the world when you're still healing and recovering, um, that was too much. There, there was no way that I could have, could have had a child over these last three years um, because I still needed healing and I would not have been able to give what I needed to give to a baby, at least what I would want to give to a baby. Um, so there's there's so many so many different sides to this whole thing. It's so complicated. You know, people think it's just you know simple. Oh, you had cancer. Now it's over. Now you go ahead with your life. Have kids. Blah blah blah. Do this. Do that. Hurry up. It's not that simple. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why I don't have any kids right now. And you know, I still got a few more months. I'm not gonna get knocked up in the next few months. That's just not happening. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm perimenopausal. I'm just going through a whole lot of stuff. And today is Mother's Day and I'm feeling a little emotional and I felt like sharing that because this is a side of me that I'm, um, it's a vulnerable side of me that I don't really talk about that much, just to a few people. And I know that there are other women just like me who are experiencing what I experienced um, and are going through what I'm going through or will be going through what I'm going through. Um, in my case, I could have done, um, what is it called, fertility preservation. Um, in order to do fertility preservation, in my case, I would have had to delay chemotherapy and dealing with the cancer. Um, I would have had to delay that and take these fertility drugs and inject myself like three or four times a day and do all this stuff. Um, in order to get viable eggs to freeze and preserve. Um, I was not, one, I wasn't willing to delay chemotherapy knowing that I had you know, cancer in my body. I wanted it out immediately. I was not willing to uh, delay that. But the other aspect of that is it was gonna be very expensive. It was gonna be very costly. And there were no guarantees that even after spending ten thousand dollars and going through the shots and all of that stuff there was no guarantee that those uh eggs would be viable and uh that you know they would result in a pregnancy later on once i chose to do that so to me um i just didn't want to take that risk or take that gamble i wanted the cancer out immediately and um it was such a quick decision you know i, I really didn't take a whole lot of time to think about it I, I, and I think I made the right decision, but um, I think that fertility preservation, especially for someone younger, I was 39, there are women who get breast cancer at like 20 something, 
Um, I think that fertility preservation, I think insurance should cover it automatically. I don't think it should be uh, a situation where you gotta figure out how you're gonna come up with the money to preserve your eggs or whatever when you get diagnosed with cancer. I think you should, I think it should be covered, period. And um, I don't know exactly how I would advocate for breast cancer uh, survivors and uh, women who go through that, but I definitely think that there should be some options, viable options, financial options available for women uh, dealing with that. And hopefully um, the organization that I'm starting with my friend Leslie and my sister Michelle, hopefully we'll be able to uh, provide funds for women who want to do fertility preservation. So anyway, okay, I'm babbling and going on and on. I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here. But that's what's on my mind this May, what's today, May 13th, I think, 2018, Mother's Day. I'm out, deuces. Thanks for signing in. This is Miranda and I am over and out, fighting like a grown ass woman, living like a grown ass woman and talking to you straight up like a grown ass woman. Bye.